Man accused of killing his younger brother by setting fire to the family's home was arraigned on murder charges today. 7 Action News reporter Gino Vitti, live in Sterling Heights with more on what the suspect attorney is saying about these charges, Gino. Well, during the video arraignment, the attorney for uh, Mark Maroki seemed unsure if his client was fit to stand trial on the monitor. The 20-year-old Sterling Heights residence at times stared off in the distance as if he had no idea what was happening. He is a threat to the community. He's also a threat of flight. That's Macomb County Prosecutor William Catondo making his case to keep 20-year-old Mark Maraki behind bars as he waits to stand trial. Catondo stating that a family dispute led Maraki to set his own home on fire. I would ask that in lieu of the fact and looking at the profile of this case and the facts of this case at this time, no bond be set until we have further information. Meraki was arraigned inside a Sterling Heights courtroom this afternoon on murder and arson charges after lighting his parents' home on Bloomingdale Street on fire, killing his 17-year-old brother Matthew last week. Meraki's attorney expressing serious concern that his client may not be competent to stand trial. When I visited Mark, and I visited him multiple times, uh, even this afternoon, and I don't think he gets it, Judge. It's like looking at a deer in headlights. Moving forward, Meraki's lawyer saying he needs to know more about the mental state of his client before proceeding. I don't want to waive his rights or do anything on his behalf unless I can tell that he understands what I'm telling him. Back here live now, that said, and before the judge says he will schedule another court date, he says a the defendant will undergo a forensic mental evaluation that could take 40 five to 60 days before that can happen. Reporting live, Gino Vici, 7 Action News. This is so complicated with all the family involved. Any word on whether the family has any contact with the defendant in jail? Well, that's an interesting question, Stephen, because usually the defendant or the defendant's family is prohibited from contacting the victim's family. But obviously, in this case, the victim and the defendant are from the same family. So the judge had to make a special exception to allow that to happen. All right, Gino, thank you for the live report.